Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to do something a little different. We're going to do a how-to video, and I'm gonna to try to do more of these, but today we're gonna to talk about the one period binomial asset pricing model for a derivative product, specifically a call option. Um, this example is going to come out of Stephen Shree's Stochastic Calculus Finance One Binomial Asset Pricing Model. Um, you can find this example on page three of this book, and it's example 1.1.1. So I'm gonna give you two methods for doing this. First, the easy algebraic one, and second, the financial engineering approach, and I'll discuss a little bit at the end why I like each approach. So the given ex information here is that S of zero um, is equal to four, uh, and then at time period one, you have eight and you have two. So this basically means that the stock price today is $4. Uh, in one period from today, it could be either eight or it could be two, depending if times are good or bad. Uh, the second thing that we know is that your strike price K is equal to five. Uh, R is your interest rate is 0.25. So if you do the math here, you take the stock price minus your call. So those of you that aren't familiar with a call option, uh, basically when the price goes up, you make money. When the price goes down, you just get nothing. But you have to pay for this option. So in this case, we would do, uh, this is H, this is T, heads and tails. Um, we'll say put a little one here to denote this is time period one. And to get the call binomial here, you do eight minus five, which gives you the value of three. And then on the bottom one, we know we're gonna get two or zero no matter what happens. So this leads us to um, essentially this binomial, which is the options value. And this is either going to be three or zero is what we're going to get at time one, depending on the stock price. To figure this out, we need to take a position in both stocks and bonds to replicate this option so that at time one, we end up with either three or zero. In practice, if you buy the call option, you will guaranteed get this, but we want to replicate this with stocks and bonds. So to get this, you end up with uh, the generic formula, which is the stock price at time t times delta, which is the number of stocks you hold, plus b, which is the bond amount, times 1 plus r, because this is simple interest. Uh, we can move on to continuous time in a later video. And this should give you your value at time t. So in this case, we have, again, the stock price at heads is eight. So this means we will have eight times the number of stocks that we need, plus B times one plus 0.25, and this should equal three. We also know that when we have the stock price at tails, uh, this should equal two, and then you have $2 times the number of stocks that you have, plus B, which is the amount you borrow, times one plus R, which is 1.25, and this should equal zero, given our call option above. So now we just do some simple algebra. You subtract the two equations to solve for your deltas, and so you end up with eight delta minus two delta equals three, minus zero, uh, this simplifies down to six delta is equal to three, and delta ends up being three six, which is equal to one half. This means you need to buy half of a stock. Now that we have delta, we need to solve for B. And B is the number of bonds that we need to take. So in this case, we plug delta back into the equation. Let's scoot this up a little bit here. And you end up with taking this first equation. So we'll call this equation one up here, which is H and equation T for tails. Anyways, you plug in eight times one half uh, plus b times 1.25, and this should be equal to three, which is our option value. If you solve this, you end up with four plus b times 1.25 equals three. You end up with b times 1.25 
equals three minus four. And so you end up with B times 1.25 is equal to negative one. And so therefore, when you divide by 1.25, you end up with B is equal to negative 0 0.8. So this is the simple solution that you need to buy a half of a stock and you need to borrow because the value is negative 0.8. So now let's prove this a little bit and just test our equations here to see if this all makes sense. So in this case, we have our original formula, which was eight times the number of stocks we bought, which was half. Then we add that to B, which is negative 0.8, times the interest rate, which is one plus 0.25. And if you calculate this value out, you end up with three. Okay, so we have replicated the top portion of this option if everything goes right, and we end up getting heads. Now let's test the tails portion, which again, if the stock price is two, and we own half of a stock, and we have negative 0.8 as we borrowed that, and we have 1.25, this equals zero. If you're wondering what this B times one plus R is, as I didn't mention before, this is just the amount you borrowed or you're going to lend uh, times one plus R, which is the interest rate. So saying if you borrowed um, $0.8 today, you'll have to pay back a dollar in the future given on this example. So in this case, this all makes sense. If the stock price is eight at time one for heads, two is tails, the strike price, which you said was five, this will give us our option pricing, which is three and zero. So now the question is, is what is this value for the option? So to get the value of the option, you simply take what we did. We bought one half of a stock which is equal to one half times the stock at time zero, which is four here. And this gives you two. Um, we borrowed um, 0 0.8 bonds. And this gives you uh, the amount you borrowed, which again is just negative 0 0.8 because we borrowed this amount. So now to figure out the option pricing here, which is what we're really trying to get at, uh, you just do the what you purchased, and then you add up basically what you borrow, so you subtract your 0.8, and this will give you 1.2, which is equal to the value of the option at time zero. This is a simple approach. Let's dive in and quickly do the more financial engineering perspective of how we do the exact same problem and see if we get the same results.